Today, we're gonna to talk about interior mapping. Let's go. Interior mapping is a way to make simple shapes appear to have interior details. This technique is popular for games because it gives the illusion that buildings that are made of simple flat polygons have complex interiors. The most recent game I've seen to use this technique effectively is Spider-Man on the PS4. Here's an example of what it looks like. The interior spaces you'll see in the windows don't actually exist. They're just details in a cube map that are made to look like they're inside through careful use of parallaxing effects. And this is why we went over cube mapping last week. If you haven't seen last week's tutorial, be sure to go back and take a look at that one because it'll show you how to create the cube maps that we need to create for today's and future videos. Since this is a complex effect, we're going to break it down into a couple of steps and we'll cover the basic core technique in this week's video and then expand on it over the next couple of weeks. So here we are in Unreal and here is our sample cube and we wanna make it look like it has an interior. So we're gonna do that with a combination of the UV coordinates on the surface of the cube, as well as the camera vector. And here we have our cube map that we're gonna be using to sample and test it out every once in a while, while we make progress. So let's start out with our texture coordinates. We need to adjust our UVs a little so that we can combine them with our camera vector here. So first we're going to add a frac node, which is going to prevent our texture coordinates from going below zero or above one. If it goes above one, it's gonna wrap back to zero. And if it goes below zero, it's gonna wrap back to one. So the frac node is returning just the fractional part of the number. All right, so now we need to expand our UVs and we're gonna do that by multiplying by two and subtracting one. So we're gonna add a multiply and a subtract node. And then we're gonna add uh, constants here. Uh, first, we're gonna multiply by two, and then we're going to subtract a value of one. In this case though, we're gonna do things a little bit differently and we're going to negate the second component. And um, so we're gonna multiply by two, negative two, and we're gonna subtract one, negative one. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna to serve to flip our UV coordinates vertically. And then finally, we're going to use an append node because we need to turn our UV coordinates, which are normally a float two data type, we need to turn them into a float three so that we can combine them with our camera vector that's also a float three. So I'm going to append a value of negative one here so that the, the Z component of our UV coordinates is gonna be inverted. Okay, so let's take a look at the results of our UV coordinate operations here. You can see that we've successfully created a three component UV coordinate. And um, the reason that we multiplied two and subtracted one is so that we could put the center of the UVs in the middle of our uh, UV space here. Normally by default, the UV center is on the edge, um, but we multiply by two and subtracted one so that we could center our UVs in the middle. And that will make it easier to combine with our camera vector, uh, which is also centered. Okay, so now let's switch over to taking a look at what's gonna happen with our camera vector. So because our UV coordinates are in tangent space or they're relative to the surface of the model, we need to transform our camera vector to tangent space as well. So we're gonna add a, a transform vector node here. And our transform vector is currently defaulting to changing from tangent space to world space. And we need to flip that because our camera vector starts out in world space. So we're gonna set the source to world space and the test destination to tangent space. All right, now let's take a look at what we get if we wire this camera vector up to our cube map. So I'm gonna use the camera vector as the UVs for our cube map. And we're gonna plug that into our base color here. 
And you can see that as I move my cube around, this is the beginning of our interior effect. You can see that it looks like I'm looking into the cube to see that number five that's on the, on the back side of the cube map. However, there is a problem here. Can you tell that the number five is a mirror image? So we need to fix that. And we can fix that pretty simply uh, just by multiplying our tangent space camera vector um, by a value of negative one, one, and one. And what this is going to do is it's going to flip the horizontal axis of my camera vector so that the five is facing the correct direction. Okay, now I've got my uh, camera vector looking pretty good uh, when I'm sampling my QMAP, but you can see that it's not moving like an interior should. And so that's the next thing that we're gonna do. We're gonna use the camera vector together with our texture coordinates uh, to create some parallax movement uh, that will mimic the look of an interior in that cube. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing that we need to do is find the reciprocal of our camera vector. And we're gonna do that with a divide node. And a reciprocal is one divided by the input value. And so I'm just going to set my divide nodes uh, const a socket to one. And so we're one over the value of our input here. And then I'm going to take the absolute value of the result. And as we learned before, the absolute node changes the result to always be positive. So if there's any portion of this vector that's negative, it's gonna switch it to um, the absolute of that, which is always positive. Okay, then I'm also gonna take this reciprocal and I'm gonna bring in my UV coordinate results. I'm gonna multiply our reciprocal by our uh, UV coordinates down here. And then the result of these two values, I'm gonna, res I'm gonna subtract this multiply result from the absolute value result that I'm getting here. Okay, now I'm getting a value that I'm gonna be able to use, but the next thing that I need to do is find out which of the three components, because, because my camera vector is a float three, uh, my result here is also a float three, and I need to figure out which of these three components is the smallest. And so I'm gonna add a split component node so that I can divide this VEC3 into its X, Y, and Z components, or R, G, and B. And then I'm gonna add minimum nodes, and I'm gonna compare, and this will tell me which of the red and green channels is smaller. And then I'm gonna take the result of that and add another minimum node. And that will tell me which of that and the blue channel is the smallest. Okay, so now with this simple little operation here, I know which of these three components is the smallest. And I'm gonna take the result of that. And let me just rearrange the graph here a little bit because it's starting to get a little bit big. So I'm gonna take a result of that and I'm gonna multiply it by uh, my original adjusted camera vector. So there is the result of my camera ve vector adjustment, and I've multiplied it by the smallest component here. And now that all of that is done, I can take the result and add it to my UV coordinates. So I'm gonna use this add node here. I'm going to take the result of all of this and add it to my UV coordinates. And now I can use that to sample my cube map. So let's wire this into my cube map and take a look at our result. Yeah! Now our cube has an interior. Pretty cool. So you can see that when I move this around, it looks like I'm looking into the inside of the box, but that's all just an illusion based on the coordinates uh, that I'm generating to look up this cube map. Now, there is one problem here. You might have noticed that the sides of the cube are on their side, uh, so my cube is not 
rotated correctly. It's basically rotated 90 degrees uh, and it's on its side. And this is a fairly easy problem to fix. I just need to rearrange the components of my shader uh, right at the end here. So instead of uh, wiring this, in, wiring my add into my cube map, what I'm gonna do is add another split components node and then I'm going to add a uh, make float node. Uh, make float three actually. And what I need to do is rearrange these components. So I'm going to wire my red channel into Y. And I'm going to wire my green channel into Z. And I'm going to wire my blue channel into X. And so the result of this is a Z, X, Y swizzle. And uh, what that's doing basically is it's gonna rotate the interior of my cube 90 degrees so that it's standing upright instead of being on its side like you see it here. So if I wire this into my cube map, now you can see that uh, all of my, uh, my back of my cube and the sides are standing up straight and I've got a nice ceiling and a nice floor as well. All right, I'm just gonna clean up the graph a little bit and then we're gonna call it done. Okay, so there you go. There is the complete uh, shader or the complete core of the effect that creates uh, the parallaxing using a cube and some UV coordinates that have been modified with the view vector to give the illusion that we have an interior. Now, in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna add some additional effects to this. I'm gonna show you how to make a shader that actually uses this. And I'm gonna show you how to make a cube map uh, that looks like the interior of a building. So be sure to come back in the next couple of weeks to see how to do those effects. All right, now let's switch over to Unity and I'll show you how to do the same thing in that engine. All right, so here we are in Unity and you can see that just like we did in Unreal, I have my UV coordinates and I have my camera direction and we're using these two nodes uh, combined together uh, to create the result of uh, an interior effect on the inside of our cube here. So let's go over what we're doing. So I take my UV coordinates and I just want the X and the Y component of the UV coordinates. And just like I did in Unreal, I'm doing a fraction uh, command so that uh, I make sure that I only have values between zero and one for my UVs. Then I multiply by two and subtract one. And this has the result of expanding the range of my UV coordinates so they're between negative one and one instead of zero and one, or basically centering the UV coordinates instead of having the center be uh, on the edge. All right, and then I split my components out, my red and my green, and I combine that result with a negative one and this is basically the same thing as the append node that we were using in Unreal. I sure do wish that Unity had an append node so that we could do that instead of using these two, but I don't know. Uh, maybe we'll get that later. Okay, uh, then I take my camera direction and I transform it from absolute world space to tangent space. And you need to make sure that your transform node is set to be a direction uh, not a position or a normal. All right, and then I take the result of that and multiply it by negative one, just like we did in Unreal to flip the uh, the axis of the, the camera vector. Then we take the reciprocal of our view vector and the absolute of that. And we also multiply the reciprocal by our adjusted UV coordinates here. And then we subtract the result of that multiplication from our absolute node. Then we split out the results because we need to figure out which of the three components is the smallest. So we take the minimum of red and green, and then the minimum of, of that and blue. And then we, res uh, we multiply the smallest component of that vector by our original camera, uh, camera direction here. And then we take the result of that and we add it to our modified UV coordinates. And then we're able to take 
uh, our UV coordinates that have been modified by our view vector and use that to sample our cube map. So you can see that we're using a sample cube map uh, with our test cube map here, and then we plug that into the color. So the result is a pretty cool looking interior. Okay, there are a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, uh, buildings generally have more than one room. And so I'm gonna show you next week how to take this effect and create multiple rooms uh, so that you have uh, so that you have a complete building and not just a single room. And the other thing that I'm gonna show you is um, how to randomize it. Because right now, if we rotate this, you can see that I'm seeing the back wall here as the five. And if we rotate it around this way, you can see I can see the back wall over here as the five and the back wall over here as the five. So this is going to always have every room with the same back of the cube. But what if we want to have the, what if we want to have the one or the two, or maybe the six on the back wall instead? Um, if we create a cube with lots of different uh, details on the front, back, and sides, uh, we can randomize it so that a different side of the cube is showing in the back. So next week I'm going to show you how to do that, plus make multiple rooms. So be sure to come back for that video as we continue to move through the process of how to create an interior mapping effect. I hope you enjoyed today's video and that you learned some things and that it was useful and that you'll be able to now start applying uh, this interior mapping effect to your projects. Well, thanks for watching everybody and have a great week.